Everyone, it's Peter Schiff. It's Friday, March 12, 2010. Well, there seems to be some action in the currency markets today. You know, the dollar had been weakening a bit, and now it's back below the 80 level. It had a decisive move down today. I think it's going to be key to watch the action in the currency markets on Sunday night and on Monday. But to me, it looks like maybe the dollar has topped out. You know, the Canadian dollar hit a new 52-week high today, uh, showing that, you know, what we really have seen recently is not U.S. dollar strength, but euro weakness. And I think the attention, again, is going to refocus back on the United States, particularly since you have some other developments recently. You had S&P out today, again, warning on the fact that the United States was in danger of losing its AAA credit rating if we don't get our budget deficit under control. And since right now it's completely out of control and there isn't even a sign that we might be getting it under control, it, it looks like that that rating obviously is in jeopardy, even though it isn't warranted right now. In fact, I read the other day that in the month of February was an all-time record high for deficits in one month. We had a, a deficit of over $220 billion just in one month in the month of February. Also very negative for the dollar is higher than expected inflation numbers coming out of China. Uh, this is putting pressure on the Chinese to raise interest rates. And of course, they can't raise interest rates uh, without causing even more hot money to flow in their economy uh, because people are going to want to buy their currency over the dollar. So if they really want to raise rates, they can't do it without allowing the RMB to appreciate uh, to try to uh, put a little bit of a damper on that hot money. Although even if they let the RMB appreciate somewhat, uh, traders might be still wanting to put more money into China because they'll, they'll look for even more RMB appreciation, which is obviously going to come. But all of this talk about higher rates and higher inflation in China uh, definitely focuses more negative attention on the dollar. And then, of course, we learned today that Janet Yellen has been nominated to be the vice chairman at the Federal Reserve. Uh, making sure that Helicopter Ben has an, a co-pilot uh, for his uh, money drop. I mean, Yellen is one of the most dovish uh, members of the Fed, and she is certainly a bad choice for anybody who is concerned about inflation or concerned about the dollar. So the fact that she's going to be up there uh, with Ben uh, should be a very negative sign to our to our creditors. You know, we had uh, Timothy Geithner was out today making a speech trying to put a positive spin on the U.S. economy. Maybe he's trying to give our creditors a false sense of confidence. But he was out there saying that the U.S. economy was going to recover a lot faster than the other major economies in the world. Now, I guess he doesn't consider China a major economy because it's obviously recovering much faster than the U.S. But maybe he's talking about Japan or Europe. But the reason that he's confident that our economy is going to recover faster is because he said that we're not going to make the mistakes that other countries have made in the past and put the brakes on too quickly. In other words, we're not going to act responsibly. We're going to keep the monetary pedal to the metal. We're going to keep creating inflation. We're going to keep interest rates artificially low to make sure the economy recovers. That's not going to make sure it recovers. That's going to make sure it never recovers. You know, in, in Geithner's speech, he said there were signs that our economy was coming back. And he's right. There's signs that the phony economy is coming back. We don't want that phony economy coming back. We want to put an end to it for sure, forever. What's not coming back is the new industrial economy that we need. What's coming back is the borrow and spend economy that we had in the past that got us into trouble. It's not the savings and producing economy that we need for future prosperity. And of course, this phony economy that's coming back, it's not really going to be able to stay back. It's like a last gasp of life uh, before it collapses once again, because we cannot maintain it anymore, given the high level of debt. You know, along those lines, we got news today that retail sales uh, were up more than expected. That came out at 8.30 this morning. And the markets liked it. Uh, CNBC was talking it up. In fact, all morning they were talking about, is the American consumer back? Is Amer are, are we back? Are we shopping again? You know, the last thing we want is for that reckless American consumer to come back. The last thing we want is people using their credit cards, going to the shopping malls, buying things they can't afford. In fact, last week I read a story that said 43% of Americans, I think it was 43%, it might have been higher, 
43% of Americans had less than $10,000 saved for retirement. Less than $10,000. That means 43% of Americans have basically nothing saved for retirement because if you only have $10,000, you ain't retiring. Now, should a nation where no one has saved for retirement, why would we want these individuals back in the malls? Why would we want them buying things? Why would we want retail sales? We would want these Americans socking away every penny they can so they can prepare for retirement. So, you know, what we don't, we don't want to see signs that the consumer is back, right? That's why we're in trouble. We want to be, see signs that after a long absence, the American saver is back. The American producer is back. The, you know, that we're making stuff again. The American industry is back. That's what we want. But unfortunately, there's no signs of that. All that's back is reckless spending, reckless monetary policy. And in fact, the government is not only back, but it's back bigger than ever. And because the government is now bigger than ever, our problems are going to get bigger than ever. You know, also, uh, speaking about our problems in big government, I wanted to comment again about uh, the unemployment insurance because I noticed some comments from my last blog uh, that I seem maybe a little bit heartless uh, to the plight of the unemployed uh, by being against the extension of unemployment benefits. And, and certainly that's not the case. I mean, I, I feel badly for people who are out of work, no question about it. My point is that simply extending unemployment benefits indefinitely, which is, looks like Congress is going to do, is going to hurt the economy. And ultimately, it's going to undermine the ability of the people who are unemployed to actually get jobs. And, you know, I saw some comments on, on, on the blog or on the uh, YouTube regarding, well, we bailed out Wall Street, so it's okay to bail out Wall Street, but not the unemployed people on Main Street? No, it wasn't okay to bail out Wall Street. But I don't believe the two wrongs make a right. Just because we bailed out one segment of society doesn't mean we should bail out another, even if the people on Main Street are certainly more deserving than the people on Wall Street. In fact, one of the reasons that the people on Main Street are having such a hard time finding jobs is because we saved all the jobs of the people on Wall Street. Had we not bailed out all the banks, there would be a lot more capital in the private sector to fund the employment opportunities that we need. Instead, those resources have been diverted uh, to perpetuate uh, this, this charade on Wall Street, this phony financial economy that is helping to undermine our economy. But we can't say because we bailed out Wall Street that we have to say no, that we have to say yes to every other spending program that, that Washington has. And, and, and yeah, you know, I know that a lot of people would rather have good paying jobs than, than collect unemployment benefits. But we can't ignore the economic consequences of continuously paying people not to work. And I know that in many cases, there are jobs out there that people could have that maybe pay about the same as unemployment benefits. But nobody would ever take that job. Why should they? Why would you take a job that paid you what you can get on unemployment? In fact, it has to pay quite a bit more just to be equal because of the income tax effect. And then, of course, as I said, if you're going to get paid the same amount of money to work or not work, you know, most people are going to choose not working because not working is a lot more fun than working, at least from most people's perspective, a lot of people take jobs that are not uh, that enjoyable. But we have to understand that just to try to feel good and say, well, people need money, if we keep doing it, we're going to further undermine the economy. We're going to make it more difficult for anybody to get a job. And then, of course, eventually, the unemployment benefits won't mean anything because they won't buy anything because we will have destroyed our currency continuously funding all these programs. And, of course, it's not just unemployment. That's just one. I mean, anything the government wants to do, whenever they come up with some crazy idea that they say is going to help the economy, they go and spend the money. And they don't even think for one second about the consequences of how it's being funded. Just like all the economists who are saying our economy is recovering just because we're spending more money, nobody looks at the source of the spending. No one bothers to realize that we're only spending more money because we're borrowing more money. We're consuming more because we're going deeper into debt. We're not solving our problems. We're making them worse. We're not getting out of the ditch. We're digging it deeper. Anyway, one more quick announcement. I, For political reasons, I'm not going to be able to do Fast Money every Tuesday and Thursday. That deal got canceled because I didn't, we didn't realize as a political candidate, I cannot make regular appearances on television. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone.